I am by no means a hacking genius who dropped out of high school or college to go work for the NSA or CIA or whatever three letter agency to hack foreign governments and make a bunch of money and become a millionaire by my mid 20s. Did I say that because I would like that? Yes. Is that besides the point? Yes. Okay, let's get back to the point. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm not the best at Splunk, Python, SQL, Cloud, whatever cybersecurity tool is yet, but I'm a pretty darn good cybersecurity engineer. Now, don't get me wrong, my technical skills are are pretty good and as a matter of fact over the last four years of my career i've had the opportunity to work and use these skills at some top cybersecurity companies mdrs mssps and tech companies including my last job at datadog and my current one as a security engineer at amazon but then again i'm certainly not the best and that's totally okay being a cybersecurity professional is about a lot more than hacking malware reverse engineering exploit development or even detection engineering and or threat hunting there are many other aspects of the job that are just as important if not more important than pure cybersecurity technical skills. So for everyone out there who might be struggling with learning something technical or getting rejected by companies or failing to answer interview questions, let me just start this video by telling you that it's totally okay. You should not let these failures define you. What you should do is to allow how you come back from these mistakes or rejections and failures to be the true measure of who you are and how resilient you are in regards to pursuing a cybersecurity career. When I first began my career as a cybersecurity analyst, I was pretty primarily focused on simply just acquiring the right technical skills. I also just basically just executed solutions that other people had already established. I used investigation queries and dashboards that other people had created and used different automation scripts that other people had written. Even as curious as I was, sometimes I still didn't even critically analyze certain things or try to understand them for myself, nor did I really dive deep into some details of analysis and investigations as far as I could. I could blame the fact that I was entry level for my behavior or some stock ticket quotas because the queue needs to be worked. Either way, whatever it is, learn from my experience and make sure to think for yourself and not be afraid to question things or sometimes tear them apart to understand why they are the way they are. This has helped me tremendously grow in my career. Now, the biggest difference between my current ways of working compared to when I was more junior and newer to the industry is that I'm able to take a step back now and then think about the bigger picture or sometimes take a step closer and dig deeper into the intricacies of things that I might be working on. Compared to before, I'm able to ask ask business critical questions now, identify the problems, and then come up with a POC or proof of concept, and then an RFC or request for comments with detailed plans, connect with the right people and the right teams, and then carry out building the solutions using my technical expertise. However, four years ago, it was completely different. My professional capabilities were significantly different than what they look like today. In those days, my manager would have approached me with a rather straightforward task like, Dave, we've noticed an issue with this detection rule. It's generating a lot of noise. Could you please take the time to fix it and while you're at it the markdown file could also use some updating as well now that's obviously a fairly simple task however fast forward to today and the expectations have evolved dramatically the tasks that are now interested to me require a higher level of strategic thinking and collaboration so for instance my manager might approach me with a request like this day we're looking to improve our rule tuning process i'd like for you to connect with the relevant stakeholders brainstorm and come up with a more efficient solution we want to be able to leverage suppressions based on entities that are already present within the detection telemetry. It's a more complex task, but I believe you're up to the challenge. As you can see, the nature of my work has transformed over time pushing me to adapt, grow, and continually expand my skill set. What this did was that it made me become the kind of cybersecurity professional who can drive projects, operate with vague questions and very literal instructions, and then navigate the boundaries between different teams, take initiative, take ownership, and take the responsibility to deliver solutions for my stakeholders. In this process, I've also learned how valuable, precise, and accurate communication is, which brings me to one of my greatest assets, if not the greatest, the ability to connect with both technical and non technical audiences. And I think that's kind of obvious with my YouTube channel here. Also, I think that we as cybersecurity professionals like to flex our know-how and how we're able to break into this airtight enterprise network with zero trust and multi-cloud security solutions and also reverse the latest and greatest, most complicated malware variant out there. And don't get me wrong, that's great and all. But I believe if you're truly an expert in your field or you want to become one, you should be able to explain whatever you're doing right now 
account in a way that a six-year-old could understand and also in a way that would satisfy all the technical needs of your fellow tech-savvy colleagues like other cybersecurity analysts, other cybersecurity engineers, product managers, or even your manager. Truth be told, working with people is one of the hardest, if not the hardest parts of the job, and delivering complex messages in the simplest possible way is a skill upon which many people actually build their entire careers. Think of CEOs, executives, VPs, and senior managers who are higher up in the ladder. They don't necessarily have those jobs because they have the most technical skills, but because they have the ability to communicate clearly, deliver complex messages in simple ways, and also pull everyone in the same direction and create a sense of purpose. And if you're looking to build your communication skills in a no pressure environment, I want to encourage you to join our CyberWorks Academy Discord. Right now, we have over 3,500 people in there and we're having conversations all the time. Everything from cybersecurity to college, certifications, resume help, and other non cybersecurity things like fitness, finance, anime, and other cool things. It'll be linked in the description. Now, I won't let this video go by without talking about technical skills. So, let's talk about them. Like I said, I'm certainly not the best at Python or SQL or Splunk or any other tool or language, but I'm certainly pretty good at them now. However, this wasn't always the case. As a matter of fact, when I first transitioned into security engineering after being a cybersecurity analyst for a couple of years, I had so much to learn. To be honest, I barely knew what Git was or what Kubernetes was. But I think that my experience just goes to show that if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, you will certainly get better. I'm just a normal guy and I'm by no means, like I said, a tech genius or cybersecurity hacking guru who sees the world in assembly code and C++. What I've done is I've simply put in an enormous amount of discipline, but not for a day or a month or a year. I'm talking about consecutively for years at a time. So please practice your skills as much as possible. Be very consistent. Make sure to practice your skills as much as possible and as often as possible. There's several platforms out there like Try Hack Me, Cyber Defenders, Blue Team Labs Online, and several others that can help you ensure that you build and continuously reinforce various skills. And you've seen me continue to do this time and time over on this channel. So I do practice what I preach, pun intended. Also, as a cybersecurity engineer or whatever cybersecurity field you might be in, there might be times where you use a certain tool less frequently or maybe stop using it completely for a while because you change jobs or roles. So the ability to pick things up again is really important. As a matter of fact, I personally had a recent experience where I had to jump back into using Splunk every single day after not using Splunk for several years. And now in just a couple of weeks, I've become fairly comfortable with it simply because I was able to utilize the strong foundational skills and knowledge that I already had, but also practice these skills as I was getting back into using Splunk. All right, to wrap everything up, I just want to say that it's totally fine and it's totally cool if you're struggling with learning all of this tech and cybersecurity stuff or if you're doubting yourself just a little bit. Let's face it, you're going to face rejection. You you might you might flunk some interviews here and there and yep, mistakes will happen. The real deal is that you're taking something away from every setback, every failure, and then working on improving yourself. Remember, working in cybersecurity or being a cybersecurity engineer is not just about being the best at hacking or reverse engineering or exploit development or threat hunting or whatever the case is, there's a whole lot more to it. Your mindset, your consistency, and other things have a lot to do with actually getting good at all these skills I just mentioned. So now that you've gotten all of this valuable information, if you want to know some more details about what I wish I knew before becoming a cybersecurity engineer, then check out this video. Or if you want to learn step-by-step -step how to get your first cybersecurity job, then check out this other video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.